I'm coming back in six months' time. I can't wait to see the results. However, I'm concerned for Eknard. I wonder whether his high-risk strategy of growing bananas will pay off. Whatever happens to these two farmers, the chance to transform their lives came from the extraordinary vision of one man, Amitabha Sadenge. I've witnessed firsthand his tremendous commitment to them. It's so strong that I worry he's taking on too much. For a multi-million dollar business, it comes dangerously close to being a one-man band. You have done a remarkable job. You're the idea man. You're the man who helps develop the products. You're the man who gets people out in the street. You bring in the money. And right now in the organization, you are irreplaceable. How would this organization go on without you? I have a very decentralized organization, so far the program is concerned, it's not worrying me, it will continue. One of my weakness, as I said, is fundraising, I'm the only patient, I'm the only person who do that, although there are people who support me writing the proposal, but actual fundraising work, I have to go around meet people, that's what I do, that's my weakness. I've already identified that, that is my problem. I want to give you a challenge for the next six months. I want to see some clear succession planning on your part. Because if you want your legacy to go on, then somebody must be groomed to carry on that legacy. Thank you very much for giving this good piece of advice. Yes, I will try to do that. Amitabha's got his work cut out for him in the next six months. He has ambitious fundraising and marketing goals. But I'm convinced that if he doesn't choose a successor, then no matter what else he achieves, he may lose everything. I'm back in India after six months, and I can't believe how different it looks. But are the farmers I met last time faring as well with their new drip irrigation systems? First, I catch up with Subash. He had just installed the KV drip so he could grow crops all year round, even during the dry season. And look at your fields. It's an astonishing transformation. Last time, this was just dry, cracked earth. And this is Subash's third crop this year. It's given him far greater financial stability. How much did you make as a profit from this field? A hundred thousand rupees. A hundred thousand. A hundred thousand. <laughs> the KB system was your friend. <laughs> it saved you, didn't it? The KB drip saved my tomatoes, and the tomatoes saved me. <laughs> it's a staggering return. Over $2,000. He's more than achieved his goal of paying for the drip system in his very first year. It's really impressive, and I know how difficult it is to make a living out of farming. The KB drip has improved the whole business of farming in this area. Farmers can now band together to sell their crops themselves, eliminating the middleman, and therefore improve profits. There's a new feeling of prosperity. It's a hard life, but when it goes well, it's worth it. With four years' experience, Janardin Kuber is the real expert when it comes to drip irrigation. He has kept accounts for 20 years, so he knows exactly how much the drip has boosted his earnings. Since installing the KB drip, I have doubled my money. Year on year, he adds to the variety of crops he grows. His financial security gives him the confidence to experiment. This is called bitter gourd. 
They say it's health giving, good for heart disease and cancer. And it's great because everyone wants them now. I have got a really good crop. I am happy. Jadnardin has great foresight. He runs his farm as a business and could see the benefits of the drip system from the beginning. How has your view of your future changed? In the future, I am planning to try out all sorts of new technology. I really want to make progress with my farm. One day you will be a very rich man. Is God's wish. If it's God's <laughs> wish. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but I think you're very practical and you're very wise and you learn from past experiences. And so you will be rich in wisdom and money. For me, it's about enriching my mind, not just about making money. I love farming very much. I will love farming until I die. This passion for the land is what truly impressed me when I met Amitabha six months ago. Despite running a multi-million dollar company, Amitabha's focus never strayed from the welfare of the farmer. How are you? When we parted, I set him a major challenge to find a successor. A tough task on top of all of his other concerns, such as fundraising and growth. So what's been happening over the past six months? A lot of great things in terms of the people who are adopting technology. I think uh, it's growing almost 40, 50 percent. Really? 50 percent? I have been able to raise almost $5 million. Congratulations! My God! $5 million during this crisis! During the crisis period. I think that really demonstrates how important your work is. This brings up the critical question. Have you been handing off some of these responsibilities to others? Have you been thinking about the time when you need to pull back from the business? Of course, I think in principle, we have a retirement policy that I should not work beyond my age of 60. I'm now 51. So I've put a system in place and I'll be happy. I think now most of the things I have delegated to people working with me and I would like, I would be very happy today to introduce one of my potential successors. Oh, wonderful. I would love to meet them. It's fantastic that Amitabha has risen to my challenge and has been prepared to consider a successor. And I'm delighted to meet him. I was going to meet my colleague Suresh. Suresh. Um, nice to meet you. Same here. Nice to meet you. And hello. How are you? What, what motivates you? I think one of the biggest things that motivates us is, you know, there's a lot of poverty in this country. And what we are doing is actually offering them a solution to get out of poverty. And that is what drives us. I will be very happy if you take over from me. And he have all the characteristics of most of my characteristics. <laughs> most of them. <laughs> You've at least identified that it was a problem. You've come up with a solution. I think if we were to come back in 50 years, you might be astonished at the impact of this simple idea. IDEI is now going global with offices in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. I feel confident that they will build on their successes well into the future. But I'm still worried about Ekna, the farmer who had risked everything to grow bananas during the dry season. He was a first-time user of the KP drip, and I fear choosing this water-hungry crop was a step too far. The last time I was here, it, you just had a few trees, and they looked like they were dying. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look, there's more. There's more. And there's more. Oh, yes, there's more over there, too. Bravo. Bravo. And right there, too. My goodness. Look at that. This is amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Did you ever think about just getting rid of bananas totally? Yes, I thought I would lose all my plants because my well didn't have any water. The fact that I had the drip made me feel better. My plants survived because of it. Was the drip worth all of the investment for you? 
Yes, I have spent a lot, but God has showered me with a good crop. And perhaps next time it will be even more. I am relieved as I can repay my loans. <laughs> I never thought I would be impressed by a piece of plastic tubing, but it enables the farmers to plant crops year-round and make a profit which they use to feed their families and educate their children. Sometimes the best solution is simple. Next time, I travel from the small port of Hastings to the world's largest fish market in Tokyo. Can we save the world's supply of fish?